Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Lukas Neumann, and I'm from University of Oxford. And today I would like to present our uh, NIDOS dataset and the competition. Let me first start by thanking uh, Unink and all the co organizers for hosting the uh, brilliant workshop and also hosting the competition. So let me, uh, for, for those who are, who are probably not familiar with the data set, let me uh, quickly go through what the data set is and uh, what, what is sort of the unique feature of this data set. So the NIDALS data set is, uh, is fairly, I would guess, larger scale data set of uh, uh, captured by an industry standard camera uh, the data set is captured in uh, in three different countries, so uh, it, it is very there's quite a lot of vari variety. And the most important thing is that the, the data the data set is captured at night only. So this is just to show a couple of examples. This is how the data look like. Uh, it's captured by an industry standard camera, so it's it's very realistic in the sense that. Uh, this is the type of camera that is already used in millions of vehicles that are already out there. So this is not some prototype or some sort of uh, uh, academic academic data set. This is this is this is these are this is real cars uh, which are currently in the streets and what they what the camera sees uh, in these cars. Uh, we. Uh, let me quickly just talk about some of the challenges that are obviously introduced uh, as part of the night uh, challenge, as part of the night uh, data. It's the things that you would probably imagine would uh, happen in this, this type of situation. So you have, of course, a lot of motion blur as the car, as obviously the exposure uh, rate is uh, very low. There's a lot of noise. Of course, uh, as the car is a moving object and as, as well as all the pedestrians are moving and all the, all the different actors in the scenes are moving, there are a lot of re reflection, high dynamics, and all these effects sort of combined makes this data set really, really challenging because it's just an RGB, a standard RGB camera. On top of that, of course, you have large variation in contrast, you have reduced color information, and you also, on top of the fact that the data set is captured at night. We, the data set is also captured throughout the different seasons of the year. So you get snow at night, you get uh, rain at night, which again, makes this very challenging. So if you compare, if you run some uh, of the baseline pedestrian detection algorithms, for instance, you will notice that the error is somewhere between three to four times higher than state of the art detectors for daytime uh, pedestrian detection. So. In that sense, there's a quite uh, large gap for improvement. You may also wonder why uh, a monocular RGB nighttime dataset is useful. Uh, I just try to point out several sort of aspects why this you may consider this useful. Of course, there, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of there are existing cars out there where the, the sort of the hardware setup is done. They the cars are driving around our streets. And they don't have many sensors. They typically have just a camera because it's you know, one of the first generation assistive systems. Uh, they don't have any LiDAR because it's expensive, but still these cars could benefit from a, from an assistive, from a driving assistant, which would warn uh, the driver that a pedestrian is coming their way or a cyclist is coming their way. So in the sense of application, it is just effectively a question of coming up with an, with an algorithm that would detect death because the hardware setup is already done. Of course, for future, uh, this may likely change and there will be more sensors, but of course you still want the systems to be redundant. So in case, let's say you have, if you have multiple sensors, you have your LIDARs, you have radars, all of these sensors have their limitations. So, you know, having a benchmark just to, to be able to uh, tell which method works best when only purely vision-based system is considered, I think is very useful. And also it, these systems may break, right? So I don't know, for instance, the, the LIDAR may become, may, may become misaligned or there may be many more issues that can, that can occur to these setups in real life. So again, you need, or us as a community need to have a, a way or an algorithm that is, that is robust and safe even in such situations, because obviously it's not possible for a, high, for a car to stop in the middle of the highway just because 
a stone hit the LiDAR sensor, for instance. And last but not least, I think there's more of a, I would guess, a philosophical aspect to it, which is uh, humans seem to be fairly capable of driving at night, even using vision only. And so you may also think of this as a, some sort of a, um, I guess, philosophic aspect to, okay, well, how do we make AI do the same thing? So let me just show you some of the examples, uh, some more examples from the data set, and then I will present you the, the results of the competition. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that the data set is uh, image-based, but the images are in sequences. So you can, uh, the, the reason why we've done this is uh, to, to basically allow uh, some part, uh, to allow participants to, uh, in one of these tracks, to be, to be able to use temporary consistency because again, at night, the expectation is that if you cannot detect a pedestrian in one frame, you may be able to detect him in the next frame. And of course, you may be able to aggregate more information in the sequence. So this is how, how the data look like. Uh, the, the green R the, the, is the ground truth of the data. So every, every single pedestrian, every single cyclist, every single motorbike is annotated in this data set. Uh, we get some uh, more changing conditions. This is not exactly nighttime. Uh, it's, uh, this is, uh, I guess, late in the afternoon, but again, you can see some of the challenges and why it may be slightly trickier to detect different people in this data set. And one last example. Again, this is like standard industry, industry standard camera. So this is, this is the raw signal that the car sees uh, and is the, as far as this particular make and model of the car is concerned, this is the only sensor that the car has. So whatever decision you're making needs to be based purely on this signal. Okay, let me, let me, take, uh, let me talk a bit more about the change itself. So uh, this is all fairly standard. We have a training and a validation set which are published and everyone can download uh, them to their, to their uh, computers. And then we have a separate uh, test set for which we only publish the images, but the annotations are kept only to us. We keep them only on the evaluation server. This is to, this is, I guess, very standard these days. This, uh, it, may, it ensures there's fair competition. It ensures that people don't overfit on the test set because the number of submissions on the test set is limited. Uh, we, did not we did not impose any other restrictions. So participants were uh, more than welcome to use any other data uh, for the training. Uh, it was entirely up to them. Uh, this year, we, uh, we expanded the competition. So there was a, this is actually the second year we're running this competition. We ran the first year at last year ICCV in, in South Korea. And this year, we expanded it into three tracks. So we, the first track is the same as the last year challenge, which is detecting pedestrians at night from a single frame. Uh, the second track was, as I mentioned before, the, also pedestrian detection, but from multiple frames. So the idea is that we wanted to, uh, we, want, we wanted to show or we wanted to see whether if you use multiple frames as an input, so all the frames up until the, the current obse currently observed frame, whether you are able to improve the, your detection results because again in theory when you're observing uh, the same pedestrian multiple times you may be able to or in multiple frames you may be able to uh, for instance eliminate false positives or uh, in, improve the recall uh, nevertheless i think uh, i can i mean it's i guess fairly obvious that uh, most of these current state of the art detector methods are only single frame based so uh, uh, you will see what the results, but uh, it didn't turn out to be such a suffer, such a differentiator. And last but not least, uh, we ran a, again an object detection from a single frame, but this time we considered all three classes. So it's effectively detection and recognition. Uh, so the the methods were required to to detect pedestrians, cyclists, and motorbikes. Uh, we use the standard Caltech pedestrian detection evaluation protocol, which is uh, we're looking for, the, for an intersection of a union overlap over a 0.5. Uh, 
if you if, if you're sort of interested in this, just I can refer I will refer you to our paper. And let me uh, let me show you the results. So uh, uh, ultimately, we had uh, 24 teams registered. So I'm very grateful for everyone who took part in our competition, and uh, I appreciate it. Takes a lot of time to train the models, validate the models, everything. So I every single every single submission is well very well uh, welcome. And uh, in the end, we got 44 competition submissions across the three tracks. So you can see the the single frame pedestrian detection was the the, the chief uh, track where we had the most submissions, but we also had some submissions in the general object detection from a single frame and a couple of methods in the multi-frame detection. Uh, so again, these results are already visible from on the leaderboard, so there should be no surprise. But uh, obviously, it, it is uh, it's my privilege to to uh, show the top three results in every in the in the in the in these uh, first two tracks. Uh, you can see or the, the first the, the winner in pedestrian detection, both in terms of the single frame detection and multiple frame detection is uh, the blue AI team. So congratulations. However, you can see that the difference in uh, in in terms of the error is very small uh, uh, when you compare it to the certainly to the second uh, participant. Uh, so it was it was a very, very close call and um, uh again it's it's uh, it was i guess uh, just a bit of luck there and uh as far as the the last uh, track goes uh this the 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 order of or the, the rank of the uh, of the winners is just reversed so you can see the blue the blue ai team placed second and yusuke shinya placed first this time with quite large margin so uh, congratulations. Uh, when you just maybe one last thing before I ask the uh, the winners to present their methods. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna have presentations from from all the uh, from the two presenters. So the the, the ones who placed uh, first in all these three three tracks. Uh, just maybe a bit of sort of look into the where where the errors or what are the Different object types and what the error was in the in the multi or, or the general object detection task. You can see that pedestrians are so, are sort of very similarly, um, or the performance there is kind of very almost identical to to the to the single object type uh, uh, tracks. However, where the difference seems to be certainly for the winner one is the detection of motorbikes. So the difference there is quite huge. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the winning method can only misses one percent of the motorbikes, whereas the second one missed ten percent of them. So I also would be interested to see how how this was achieved. Okay, so this is everything from sort of the introduction, and now I would like to ask uh, Yusuke Shinya, the the winner of the third uh, track of the general object detection, to present his method. Hello everyone, I'm Yosuke Shinya. Today, I'd like to talk about the UniBasNet, the first method of the Night Owls All Objects track. This work is done as an individual. First, I'd like to talk about the design concept of the UniBasNet. The first challenge of object detection for autonomous driving is the detection of small objects. Because in a traffic environment, small far objects may be nearby in a few seconds. The detection of large objects is also obviously important, so much scale object detection is necessary. The second challenge is the scale of data set in this workshop. Training on large scale datasets is computationally resource intensive, so it is difficult to train large models and tune hyperparameters. Therefore, we use a medium-sized backbone, ResNet50. 
In addition, the training is based on standard hyperparameters. Only minimal hyperparameters joins are made. Recent state-of-the-art object vehicles use long training and COCA-specific hyperparameters on each dataset to improve the speed accuracy trade-offs. In order to achieve the full performance of efficient data and YOLO before, we need to tune hyperparameters on each dataset. For individuals and laboratories with limited computational resources, it is difficult to tune hyperparameters on large-scale datasets. In relation to the second challenge, I am to, I, I aim to build a universal background model. That is a base model to be transferred small subsets of other, or other data sets. The third concept is under development. The approach I have taken for universal scale of detection is combining state of the art of the detectors. Retinite is adapted as a base architecture and ATSS is used as a base method. Anchor aspect ratio is set to one, the default value of ATSS. There is room to change the aspect ratio to 0.41 because the proportion of person classes is high, unlike COCO. In addition to, in addition, I used the SEPC. IBM is removed so that the model can be trained with a batch size of less than four. I don't explain the details of ATSS and the SEPC here. Please ask the authors of each paper in the main conference. Furthermore, I changed the backbone from ResNet50 to ResNet50. DCN, deformable compression networks and much scale toning are used. A stronger single stage objective detector made up of all of these is the UniPassNet. The combination of state of the art methods are not necessarily the new state of the art because each method is free complementary, is not free complementary. Therefore, I considerably evaluated the effectiveness of universal net design on Coco and Wayam Open. F0 means frame zero, and test scale is shown by pistol in the shoulder edge. Like Coco, ATSS is better than Retina Net on, also on Wave Open. On the other hand, when I added the SPCC to ATSS, the Wave Open accuracy is decreased, though the Coco accuracy increases. I found that this reduction in accuracy occurs when the test scale is not large. ATSS plus SPCC outperforms ATSS at higher test scales. This phenomenon needs to be explored. The universe net is even stronger. It achieves 0.489 on Cocoa Bar with a 2x schedule, that is 24 epochs. On Wave Open, the universe net outperforms ATS plus SEPC only, with only one epoch of training. Changing one in to 0.001 and uh, full train for seven epochs. The uh, final result without TTA is shown here. The universe net is good speed of accuracy trade-offs with tw only 24 epochs training. Yeah. 
Next, uh, I fine tune fine tune the way more open data set mod for models on night owl detection. For fine tuning of night owls, the problem is that the number of bicycle driver and motorbike driver are few. Thus, I prevent overfitting in two ways. The first is to map the classification layer. I transfer the weights of four cyclists land on the richer WAM open to night world driver classes. The second is array stopping. The model is trained for two epochs without background images. This is less than 5,000 iterations. This hour stopping is good for the driver classes, but it's too short for the pedestrian class. This is one of the reasons why the universe net wasn't the first place in pedestrian detection. Next, let's talk about the test of time augmentation. For way more prone, the improved image resolution is larger is better. As the winner two simple team set, small objects matters for way more open. In addition, I added the eight pixel padding intentionally to slightly improve validation AP. Its effectiveness needs to be explored. For night walls, Raja is not better. The first reason is that small objects are ignored in reasonable setting used in the pedestrian detection literature. And compared to when open, the images are broader, noisier, and low resolution, and has fewer positive samples. So final resolution is not robust. In conclusion, UniversNet is a single stage of detector detector designed for universal scale detection. It achieves 0.489 on cocoa variation, and it's sufficiently fast and trained with 24 epochs. The universe is a state of the single stage object detector on way open to the detection leaderboard and achieves first progress on night owls all objects. The code is built on MM detection need 2.0. If any questions, do add to me on Slack. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And now for the second speaker, uh, this uh, this is the winner for of the first and second track. So that is the single and multi-frame uh, pedestrian detection. This is the team uh, Deep Blue AI. And unfortunately, they were not able to make it. So that we have a pre-recording uh, of their method. And I will talk about our solution to this challenge. Due to time limitation, we will cover the most important topics only. The first is to analyze the given data, and then I will introduce some useful modules. Here are members of our team. They all come from deep pool technology. But before start, let's give a quick recap of the problem. We have about 30 6,000 images noted into four classes. There are more than 100,000 images of test data. The pictures is blurry and low contrast. It is very challenging to anyone who wants to train a good detector. We also analyzed the difference in pedestrian detection and the dis distribution of anchor ratio. The distribution of the anchor, anchor ratio is stable for 
pedestrian detection, there is no anchor ratio smaller than one, and it is maybe affected by varying posture, angle of view, crowding, lightning, etc. This is the pipeline of our detector. There are many similarities between this year's model and the last year's model. So, I would like to highlight the changes this year. Here are some useful modules. The deformable convolution, adaptive part localiza localization for objects with different shapes, and reduce the effect of feature misalignment and help to deal with the occlusion. An FPN feature pyramid network generate more positive sample for small objects handling different skills of object. DC and FPN, those two methods are widely used. It is always helpful. And we also use the RI align pooling and cascade RCN. Cascade RCN reduced the effect of feature misalignment and got better localization performance by refined box cascadely. At CBNet, uh, we choose a better backbone so we get better performance. And these, these days, there are more stronger backbone for, for the peer. But due to time limitation, we use a uh, we choose CPNet as our backbone. Uh, doublehead is the key to our improvement. We find that the loss of classification is large. So we try different heads to adjust our results. And it turns out that doublehead is the most effective. Object classification is enhanced by adding classification tasks in Comhead, as it is complementary to the classification in FC head. Bounding box regression provides a luxurious supervision for FC head. Here are some experimental configurations. We use multi-skill training and test for two skills. And we also use data augmentation. Our backbone is uh, CBNet and we also use Cocoa Print Train Weight. Here is the result on our local validation. Data set. Our baseline is uh, faster RCN ResNet 50. And after we add the Cascade RCN and CBNet, the missing rate got 18.84. And I have uh, observed the visualization results and find that some misclassification has been greatly elevated, but it may be because the recoil is low and the promotion is not as large as expected. For testing, we use multi skill and soft MS. We compared it with the last year's champion algorithm without using additional, without using extra data. We found that the computation was late. We found that the computation was late for us and the test data was huge. So we didn't have enough time to train our model and try more testing skills. Later, if we had more time to prepare our, we will, we will believe that our performance could be for further improvement. Here are some of the, here is the visualization of our results.
Well, that's all. Thank you.